community health care system. And on behalf of the board of directors of the health care system, we'd like to welcome everybody here today to this exciting announcement. I'll be acting as the master of ceremonies for the morning and understand that Premier Ford will be making an important announcement for our community in a few minutes. First, I'd like to welcome some of the dignitaries that are present with us this morning. Obviously, the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of the Province of Ontario. The Honourable Christine Elliott over, where'd Christine go? Oh, there you are back there. Christine Elliott, who is the Deputy Premier and Minister of Health. The Honourable Willem Buma, our MPP for Brantford Brant. There's also some other dignitaries in the audience. There's Mayor, the Honourable Worship, Kevin Davis, the Mayor of the City of Brantford. David Bailey, the Mayor of the County of Brant. Chief Mark Hill from the Six Nations of the Grand River. I don't see Mark. Is Mark here? Oh, there you are, Mark, right in the front. And I'm not sure if Chief Laforme is here today, but I'd, I'd like to recognize him too. It's also important to recognize our Federal Member of Parliament, the Honorable Larry Brock. There's Larry. And the Chair of our Foundation, Heather Wilson, who will be an integral part, she and her team, moving forward after our announcement today. More importantly, though, in this room today, there are a number of frontline staff who have made this hospital run smoothly every day and who serve the patients of our community. I would be remiss that on behalf of the Board of Directors, I didn't take this very public opportunity to acknowledge what they do every day in caring for our community and they have made the last two years as we have dealt with the challenges of the COVID pandemic bearable. Thank you very much. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Willem Buma, who's our provincial member of parliament and a good friend of mine. Well, Thanks very much, Paul. I'd like to welcome everyone to this historic announcement in Brantford and Brant. It's always good to be among friends. It seems like a lifetime ago when I was a Brant County Councillor, I recall there were calls for a complete redevelopment of the Brantford General Hospital. These capital requests are a multi-decade endeavor. In my first two weeks after taking office as MPP, finding out that Brantford was not on that list at all, I jumped into high gear immediately and we literally started from zero to where we are today. We all recognize the urgent need for redevelopment of the Brantford General Hospital as outlined in the Ministry of Health appointed supervisor's final report in 2019. Since then, it has been all hands on deck and the community has come together. Businesses, community organizations, school children and hundreds of constituents have contacted my office showing their desire for a redeveloped BGH, essentially a new hospital that will better serve a growing community. Mayor Kevin Davis's rooftop advocacy video was amazing. So without further delay, I would like to introduce someone who is a great friend to Brantford, Brant and Southwestern Ontario as a whole. My boss, I know he doesn't like that, my mentor and my friend, Premier Doug Ford. Premier. Thank you so much. Uh, th th thank you so much, folks. And, and good morning. And I, I just want to thank uh, Will. Uh, you know, w without Will pushing this, and I, my favorite saying throughout this pandemic, you're beyond someone like an 800-pound gorilla. He is the 800-pound gorilla. And he, he was on our back because, honestly, th this just wouldn't happen without uh, Will really, really pushing it forward. And, and I, I want to welcome again the, the mayors, Mayor uh, Bailey, Mayor Davis, and and my right-hand person that's been beside me, uh, shoulder to shoulder. We've been connected at the, the hip for right from the, the beginning of our, our mandate, but over the last uh, two years as, as the best uh, Minister of Health, Deputy Premier you could ever ask for, Christine. Christine's been working for the people of Ontario for over 16 years, and and uh, I'm going to miss her. Uh, she's just a wonderful person, big heart, and our, our family and has a friendship going way, way back. Um, for close to probably 20, 30 years. But I, I want to start by taking a moment to thank the outstanding staff here at Brant Community Healthcare uh, System. And again, as I mentioned to the, the nurses when I met them earlier, 
uh, we wouldn't be able to get through this and, and get to where we are without incredible work that you are. So I'm speaking for everyone in Ontario. We're just so, so grateful. And we thank you from the bottom of our heart. Uh, Dr. David McNeil, you led an incredible team here. Uh, thank you for your leadership, along with uh, Chief Hill of the Six Nations. Chief, great to see you. And uh, I'm not too sure if Chief LaForme has arrived yet, but I want to acknowledge uh, Chief LaForme of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations, uh, who are here today representing the Indigenous partners that we have an incredible relationship with. Friends, after two very, very long years, uh, we've, we've come so far. Now, because of the sacrifices made by every Ontarian and the amazing care provided by our healthcare heroes, we've been able to safely and cautiously reopen the, the province. Our government has a plan to build a stronger, more resilient province with a health system that can respond to crisis. Today, as part of that plan, our government is delivering on our promise to bring real help to the people of Brantford. We're stepping up with investing $2.5 million to support the planning grant of Brant Community Healthcare and the major redevelopment of this project. And it's gonna be a beautiful development. This is the first step of a redevelopment that we'll see in ex expanded Brantford General Hospital with a new patient tower, a renovated intensive care unit, updated surgical suites, and an improved mental health and addiction care. It will add 70 much needed new beds to the hospital, bringing capacity to 380. This redevelopment will help put patients first and serve this growing community and everyone who calls it home. Here in Brantford and across Ontario, we're making good on our promise to end health, hallway health care with a historic, these are, these are big numbers, with a historic $30.2 billion invested over the next 10 years to renovate and expand hospitals right across this province. We're bringing world-class health care to the people regardless of where they live. We're not just putting a Band-Aid on Ontario's health care system. We're getting shovels in the ground and investing for a stronger future for generations to come. Our province has come so far, we can't afford to go back to the politics of no. Instead, we're government saying yes, yes to building modern hospitals, yes to investing in our communities, and yes to building a stronger and more resilient province. Friends, let's say yes to a better and brighter future for all the people of Ontario. Thank you, and God bless each and every one of you. Now I'll pass it over to Dr. David McNeil. Thank you, everyone. Premier Ford, Minister Elliott, an MPP BOMA. This is a momentous occasion for our community and for our hospital. We are thrilled. The community is again the pathway to getting a new hospital. On behalf of the Board of Directors, our community, the employees and the medical staff, the volunteers who work and here at the Brandt Community Healthcare System every day, I would like to extend our sincere appreciation to you and your government for this approval and funding grant. The need for a new hospital is so evident. Our community is growing and the hospital infrastructure housing the majority of our acute care services is old. The redevelopment of the Brandt Community Healthcare System Emergency Department represents the first phase of this journey. This was pre previously approved by Minister Elliott. In April, we will be submitting our tender documents for Project 1 to the Ministry of Health. Once this approval is granted, we'll be, we will put this project out to tender and it will mark the beginning of the redevelopment of the Brandt Community Healthcare System. This will bring us towards a new hospital here in Brantford, serving the communities of Brantford, Brant County, Six Nation, and Mississaugas of the Credit and beyond. Mr. Boma, thank you for being our champion. After each meeting that Mr. Emerson and I had with you to discuss the hospital's need for redevelopment, there was always follow-up. You facilitated over the last several years the opportunity for the hospital to make submissions through the Ministry of Finance pre-budget consultation process. 
I know that you articulated the urgent need to move the hospital's redevelopment project forward effectively within government, and today's announcement is evidence of that. Your support has been much appreciated. I would like to extend my appreciation to the Master Planning Steering Committee who guided the efforts of this work. Mayor Davis, Mayor Bailey, Chief Hill, Chief LaForme, Mr. Brock, Mr. McCollman, thank you for your advice, your support, and your advocacy. This is about our community and it will be built on the foundations of strong partnership. I would also like to thank BCS Foundation Chair Heather Wilson and Executive Director Carrie Wilson who have been part of the extraordinary efforts and been great partners. Mr. Levesque, former member of the Mayor's Task Force for your valued input and advice as well. The voice of patients and families has been well represented by our patient advisor, Joyce Kazarin and Gail Gloucester and members of our patient family advisory committee. I would echo the sincere thanks of Mr. Emerson to our employees, our medical staff and volunteers who through the challenges of the last two years have shown amazing resilience to our patients and to each other. During the next several years, it will be your knowledge and your input, working with our design teams that will work to transform the Brant Community Healthcare System into the facility that we need to serve the future needs of our community. Thank you, and I will pass it now off to Paul Emerson. Thank you very much, David. Thank you, Premier Ford. Thank you, Minister Elliott. Thank you, Will and Boma. This is an amazing first step for this community. We're all gonna have to work together for the next five, six, seven years to pull it off and we can do it. This is, I, I also wanna say I was remiss and I didn't mention that Peter Quinlan, our vice chair is there. I see you sitting there, Peter. And I know our whole board of directors would have liked to have been here today, but there just wasn't room in, in the room. So thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Minister. And we look forward to the next steps in moving this forward. We'll now take questions from the media. If those with questions could please form a line behind the microphone, we'll go one at a time. Uh, one question and one follow up per reporter. Thank you. Hi, Good morning, doing? Premier. Vincent Ball from the Brantford Expositor hey, here. Vincent. I'm wondering, sir, if you can tell us a little bit about the the, the decision for a redevelopment here versus a uh, a brand new hospital on a green space. If there's anything you can tell us about that. Yeah, honestly, Vincent, I, I think the best person uh, to talk about this is uh, the minister or, or uh, chair of the, the, the hospital. But I'm just so happy. This is this is going to be a phenomenal uh, redevelopment for this hospital. And when when communities grow like they have been and, and Brantford is booming, uh, we need to make sure that we, we have the new hospitals, new schools, and and uh, new roads and bridges, and that's exactly what we're doing. So I'd like to maybe pass it over. Yeah, thank you. Um, very good question. What this grant enables us to do is start planning, and part of that planning will be determined whether it is a rebuild on this site or another location. However, we do know in consultation with the Ministry of Health officials that there is a desire to retain the infrastructure, the good infrastructure that's here now, the D-Wing, the pediatric unit, the new emergency, $30 million new emergency, and the proximity of this location to the 403 and to the broader area that it serves makes a lot of sense too. However, that hasn't been predetermined yet, David. It'll be part of the planning process. And if there's a better site that makes more sense, I'm sure we'll advocate for that. David, did you want to add or is that? So my follow-up question would be then, what kind of a timeline are we looking for? Because residents will want to know when will this all happen? And I know it's a long process and it takes a lot of time, but can people talk a little bit about what the timeline would be for people? Sure. I, I think David's going to. This is the first stage in the planning process. The Ministry of Health has a five stage uh, planning process. Stage one allows us to give us permission to plan as a community. Um, and, you know, in terms of the timelines that that first stage would take us probably just as a hospital well over a year uh, to get through that first stage of the planning process. Um, I think when we look at hospital redevelopment, these are significant investments that we are making 
um, that the province has to make. They have to prioritize resources. Um, I don't think it would be unreasonable to expect that it will take up to 10 years before you're um, moving into a fully redeveloped uh, facility. And as I've said, though, that you know the planning of that redeveloped facility, the good news is we are getting a redeveloped emergency department that will serve the community well into the future. And that will be a modern state-of-the-art emergency department. And that process starts um, as soon as we can get out to, uh, to tender. So this is a, a transformation that will occur over a number of years. So when does it start? We see it starting um, as soon as we moving out to tender for the emergency department redevelopment. And this is an ongoing, um, ongoing process. Um, so that we can actually retain the investments that we have here that are good, that serve the patients well within our community and that the siting for which is very appropriate as we think about redevelopment. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Vincent, in terms of time. When does the tender go out for the emergency department? Pardon me? Tender go out for emergency department? We will be submitting our drawings to the, our tender documents to the Ministry of Health in April. There is a process that, of course, we have to go through with the, the Ministry of Health. If I was being very optimistic and, you know, I hate timelines, but um, I would probably say by the fall, we should be in the position to be ready um, to go out to tender for project one of the emergency department if all of that planning goes as smoothly as we all anticipate and hope. Uh, hi, Premier, Mike Crawley from CBC. Um, so Dr. Peter Uni, uh, the head of the science table, uh, said this morning that the science table was not consulted about the decision to end the mask mandate on March 21st. And he also said that uh, this decision isn't about science. He says there was political pressure. So what do you say to the fact that uh, the, the science table, which you've been consulting all along, wasn't consulted about this decision and says it's not about science? Well, let me be very clear. There's uh, no pressure on Dr. Moore. I follow the advice and the recommendations of the Chief Medical Officer of Ontario. He consults with the science table and we're looking forward to the recommendations that he's putting forward at 11 o'clock today. And we're going to take his advice uh, on the time frame moving forward with the masks. And, you know, like you look around the world, no matter if it's uh, CDC down in the U.S. and the rest of the world, uh, you know, we've been super cautious. As a matter of fact, I've been probably accused of being the most cautious leader in North America when it comes to this pandemic, but I, I want to be cautious. And we're going to take those recommendations and, and move forward with the advice of uh, Dr. Moore, which has done an incredible job for the people of Ontario. Okay. Uh, if assuming you're going to accept his recommendations for listing, yes. lifting the mask mandate, what happens if, uh, if things change in the spring? Like if, if there is another wave, how confident are you that there's not going to be another wave of, uh, of COVID in the coming weeks? Yeah, thanks for that question, Mike. No one has a crystal ball when it comes to this pandemic but we feel we've been invested strongly in our healthcare system and to the people right, right around this room here have been absolute champions and we're very, very grateful. We've all, uh, not only Ontario, but the whole world has learned so much over the last two years and we're in, in much better shape than, than we uh, were prior uh, to this pandemic. And I'll give, give one, one example. Um, you know, right at the beginning of the pandemic, everyone was running around looking for PPE and, and you know, trying trying to get it from overseas. And I remember saying we'll never be in that position again, and we never will. We have uh, 3M that stood up a facility that are producing millions and millions of N95 masks. We have uh, local companies making gowns and face shields um, and surgical masks too. So we'll, we're well equipped on, on that, and we, we stood that up or the, I should say the people of Ontario stood it up because that's who did it um, in a matter of a couple months. So right now we're, we're doing fairly well, but we're always gonna be cautious. And anyone who wants to wear a mask, uh, Mike, uh, they're, they're more than welcome to. Um, it's gonna be up to the, the people. Good morning, Premier. Uh, Jason Gadol with CHCH. Hi, Jason. Hey. Um, is it acceptable for municipalities or even public health units to continue with their mask mandates if that's the direction that they choose to go here? Well, they're, they're gonna have to go through uh, Dr. Mora, the chief medical officer. Uh, and he, he again, he's done an incredible, incredible job. But I just wanna thank all the uh, public health officers throughout the two years that have really worked hard along with our, our frontline uh, healthcare folks. They've done an incredible job. We wouldn't be here uh, today if people of Ontario didn't follow the protocols 
that were laid out by local public health officers and the chief medical officer and, and the great uh, healthcare uh, folks here. We know how COVID-19 measures have been pretty divisive. Um, aren't you concerned for uh, a lack of civility or even in some cases abuse for people who choose to keep them on? No, you know something, we're, we're going to move forward cautiously and if someone wants to keep them on, uh, God bless them, you know, good good for them. But I know a lot of people uh, don't want to uh, keep them on. And uh, again, we, we aren't leading the, the way in this. We're kind of middle of the pack. I know down, down in the U.S. with CDC, their recommendations about getting rid of the mask. But it's going to be up to the, uh, the people of Ontario. If you want to keep your mask on, keep it on. Um, if you want to take it off, take it off. But we have to move move forward from this. Like people... People are exhausted, you know, and the poor kids in the, those classrooms, too. Like, we, we, we got to move on. Yes. Hey, Jamie. Hi, Mr. Premier. Good morning. Uh, what's going to happen March 21st? Are the masks going to come off in a lot of places? Are restrictions to uh, outdoor facilities and indoor facilities going to be lifted? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to steal Dr. Moore's thunder. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, probably get 30, 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let him uh, give you the details. Uh, he has a very strong plan and um, he's worked really hard on it as well with, with uh, collaboration with our great uh, Minister of Health. And uh, we feel it's a strong plan. So, Jamie, with all due respect, I got to kind of let Dr. Moore roll out the details of that if, if that's fine. And it is a huge decision or a huge announcement. Why won't you make the announcement? It's only 30 minutes away. Plus also, yeah, why won't you make the announcement? It's a huge well, announcement. Yeah, All of Ontario is waiting for the shoe to drop. Why yeah. aren't you making the announcement? Well, I'm, I'm I would hear making a fabulous announcement. I'm, I'm out in the media almost every day, every second day. And I, I, I really believe uh, this is an opportunity for Dr. Moore to put his recommendations out. I'll be commenting after, but it, you know, Dr. Dr. Moore has worked so hard day in and day out. And I, I, I don't know, I, I just don't feel I should be out there trying to steal his thunder. This, this is an incredible person that's worked so hard. So let's let Dr. Moore put his, his plan out there and recommendations and uh, we'll, we'll move forward. All right, thanks everyone. So thank you. I just wanna thank everyone once again. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Um, I'm just so, so grateful. And uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get a, a beautiful uh, new, uh, we're gonna revitalize this, this whole uh, building and, and thank you for your leadership. And Will, you're an absolute champion. This would not be happening without you and the great leadership of, of Minister Elliott. So thank you and God bless.